Good morning, everybody, and welcome to River Church Sutton on YouTube for the first time. Woo! Uh, oh, I thought that there might have been some people joining in there. Woo! <laughs> um, just to do a, a couple of reminders for you, because we've now moved over to YouTube, if you want to make a comment like you were in Facebook Live, you need to be signed into a Google account to be able to do so. But please do, if you have any words or pictures or scriptures that you want to share, please do use that facility because there will be somebody checking it throughout. Um, also, partway through the worship time today, we are going to be taking communion. So um, do run and get your bread and wine or juice if you haven't already got it. I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Claire and this is Emily and Ben, um, my kids. Uh, I'm part of the wider leadership team of Rid River Church. So if you haven't been here before, a huge welcome to you. I just want to thank Pete and Louise, uh, members of our church who put on a fantastic quiz last night. Thank you for all the effort that went on behind the scenes. And huge congratulations to the Ullman Halls for a landslide victory there. Um, I just want to read out a scripture, um, which I really felt to share this morning. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger, or sword. As it is written, for your sake we face day, death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. In these strange and somewhat unsettling times, it is so great to know that whatever is going on, whatever hardships we are facing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. And he is at work. Um, we're just going to have some um, a news update of some of the things that have been going on. Uh, I think we're going over to Rob right now. Wonderful. Good morning, everybody. A nice shot of someone shouting. Um, yes, it's wonderful to be with you this morning. Uh, my name is Rob, and um, this I'm is Abby. Abby. Um, we are um, part of the leadership in, in River Church, but we, um, as a church, have been uh, looking at and preparing for planting a new church in Epsom. And we've been doing that now for um a number of months it feels like a, a good amount of time and um and it just so happens that this uh, last week we have announced the name of our church plant so we wanted to share that uh with you all with river church this morning we want to uh, want you to celebrate with us where god has taken us each step at a time to uh plant a new thing here in epsom and we're really excited about it and, uh, and the name of the uh, church we're, we're going to have here in Epsom is called Gateway Church. And we feel that that is the, the name that, that, um, that God has, has been speaking to us about and leading us in. And we are excited about what that means for Epsom, what it means for us as a community, uh, because we really believe that um, we want Jesus to be uh, the gateway to heaven for a gateway to the kingdom of God. We want uh, many to come to know Jesus through this new plant, this new um, new ex expression of, of God in Epsom. So we are uh, looking forward to um, all that will happen over the coming weeks and months. You know, and um, yeah, just the, just a little bit of the vision behind that. You know, we really believe that, um, and this is Noah. We really believe Hello. that. Uh, Jesus, we want Jesus to be lifted high. We want his name to be um, known in Epsom. We want the whole of Epsom to be changed because of Jesus. And we're excited about, um, you know, the fact that we want Jesus to be the gateway for many to know him, but also the gateway for people who don't know Jesus yet, but those that do know him, that we will grow and uh, grow in our understanding and knowledge of Jesus. Did you want to add? Alex, for that. Um, well, just that really, 
I guess the word gateway um, is a celebration, yeah, of Jesus that we want um, to partner with him to see his kingdom come in Epsom and the surrounding area. And so we're really excited about um, the name and um, what we're hoping to partner with Jesus in over, um, yes, the foreseeable future and beyond. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. So even though this, you know, we're everything, whole of life's up in the air, we really believe that God is calling us to Epsom, that God is doing things behind the scenes. God is doing a, a thing here in Epsom that we want to come alongside him, his Holy Spirit, and, um, and, and see his kingdom come here in Epsom. So oh, back to you, Claire. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so we're going to start our worship time just by declaring that, yeah, God is on the throne and he is awesome. So we're going to worship him. I'm just going to pray. Yeah, Father, I just thank you that you are at work in our lives, that you are at work even when we have to stay behind closed doors, so many of us. Um, and Father, we just invite your Holy Spirit to just come and have your way, Lord, that while we might not be able to be gathered together all in one room, God, your Holy Spirit is with each one of us in our homes, whether we are gathered together with family or whether we are on our own. God, we just want to settle our hearts and prepare for worship now and say, Lord, come, have your way. We love you. We worship you. Amen. We're going to start by singing, let your majesty speak peace to me.
that we're quite enjoying lockdown, Lord. We say that you are good. And Father, we just submit to your will afresh this morning. We humble ourselves and say, Lord, we might not understand everything that you do and everything you allow, but we know that you are on your throne, that you are in control, that you are good and that you are trustworthy and that you bless us even in the midst of suffering and pain. We saw that with the way Jesus walked on this earth. And Father, I just want to pray for everybody right now for a fresh infilling of your Holy Spirit. Lord, where people might feel scared, where they might feel dry, whether they might feel actually that they've really walked close with you this week and feel really refreshed. God, I just pray whatever stage or state each person is in, Lord, that you'll pour yourself into them afresh. God, anoint them. Give them a sense of your peace, your joy. Father, we thank you that you come close to us in the good times and the bad. We thank you that you are our Father. Amen. Yeah, we're just going to um, sing, blessed be your name. Every blessing you give to us, Lord, we will pour back as praise to you.
We're going to move into a time of communion right now. So if you've got some bread or some wine to hand, to just invite you to go and grab that now. If you're a follower of Jesus, this is something that is incredibly special for us to be able to do that. You know, we might all be in separate homes right now, uh, even watching at different times of day. But the beautiful thing is, in Christ, we are one body, that we are united by the one Holy Spirit. And Jesus said quite provocatively in John 6, he said, whoever eats my flesh, that's what the bread is. I'm just trying to look for it. There it is. Whoever eats my flesh and whoever drinks my blood, that's what the wine or juice signifies. If you do these things, you abide in me and I abide in him. That's a really special promise, isn't it? So wherever you are and however you are feeling this morning, know that Jesus is with you right now as we share this bread and wine together. He is our comforter. He is our rock. He is our refuge and our strength. He is our hope and our righteousness. Can anything separate us from the love of God? Romans says absolutely nothing can. So on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and after giving thanks, he broke it, saying, this is my body given for you. In the same way, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let's just pray. Jesus, we thank you that you are indeed here with us by your spirit. That because of the victory, your victory on the cross, sin, hell and death have been defeated. And we can know a living hope, not just for today, but for tomorrow and for eternity. Thank you that Jesus, you are the bread of life. In you we find our sustenance, in you we find our strength. And I just pray right now. Wherever people are watching from, wherever people are taking bread and wine together, or even on their own, I pray that you will breathe fresh life and fresh hope and fresh faith into their hearts. Holy Spirit, we ask, will you empower us afresh to proclaim the victory of the cross to those around us? far and near. Thank you for giving us this amazing sacrament that we can know unity even as we are socially distanced. Just pray for the love of God right now to touch your heart and your mind. We're just going to have a moment now, just going back into worship. We're going to sing in Christ alone. Just use this time to reflect on all that Jesus has done. And and if you don't yet know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you'd like to find out more about this hope and about this this joy that we can know, then please do get in touch. There will be ways of doing that at the end of the service, uh, emails and, and such. And also, if you just like prayer as well, that will also come up at the end of this service. But please do get in touch. We'd love to help you on your journey of faith. But let's now just reflect and respond to all that Jesus has done through this song. Amen. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. We're going to start doing this, but feel free if you haven't taken your bread and wine yet, just to Um, Use this time for for reflection and to do that and just join in whenever you want to.
Amen. We just thank you, Lord, that you command our destiny. We do not um, need to have guilt in life or fear in death. That your power is at work today. Thank you, Jesus. We are now um, going to move on. Um, and each week we've been trying to hear from somebody different in church. We've been looking um, and hearing from people on the front line. Um, and today we're going to hear from uh, Neil, who works in a care home. So from that kind of sector, just to hear what his experiences have been in recent weeks. I hope you're well. I hope everybody at... Um at River Church is is keeping safe. Alongside the the work that I do here in the art studio, I also work as a part time admin administrator for a small care home down in down in Purley. And Steve had asked if I could um, just share a, a message from from what it's like in the in the care home at the moment and there's no getting away from the fact that it's a tough time at the moment i don't i don't think in this industry i've i've been in in a period where we've seen so many residents die in such a short space of time and i think there's there's a lot of confusion within the homes there's a lot of fear within the homes i think it's it's very much a time when i've i've very much felt that I could push into my faith and I could I could definitely pray more at this time. I've been hugely supported by by both Steve and Rob and ever since coming to, to River Church I joined the the life group and Louise and Pete have been have been amazing in, in, in keeping that going via Zoom and there's just something very there's something very comforting and strengthening about going into an environment like at the care home, knowing that you have people who are praying for you and there are people praying for the residents at the home. And it's, it has a huge, a huge impact throughout the day. I think I've certainly noticed in the home lately, how much, how much more prayer is happening in the home, how many more conversations we're having about God in the home. There's a lot to this that, that we are, are going to be scared of and that we're never going to understand but i think we can trust it that god's got this one of the the things that will come out of this is the simple fact that i think this this whole virus has highlighted a lot of inequality within our within our society that i think we as a church and and as christ followers can can spearhead change going forward even within the within the care sector i work with i work with carers who at the start of the year were were classed as as low skilled workers and now they're key workers now we we all go out out on our doorsteps on a thursday evening and clap for them so hopefully their work will be will be valued for for the immense effort and the immense love that they put in they put into their work um one of the hardest hardest point parts of the care home is for the residents that that are healthy and the residents that are have capacity is the home is on lockdown they're unable to see their families sometimes we have families will stand in the car park and wave through the windows at their relatives and it's this lack of of human intimacy and contact is is devastating that's the by far the hardest part of our of our days is trying to explain to to residents why their families can't come in, why they can't hug their their grandchildren. And I think for for the members of the church that we that we have that are really struggling with this, I I would just say look, make make the most of the of the technology here, like these video calls, Zoom conferencing, telephone calls, and please reach out to people if you feel yourself becoming isolated and and becoming withdrawn then then reach out so on, on one of the days when yeah we we'd sat with a few residents as they died and it was just it was a very very just a very tough day and i remember at that point rob had sent me through a text which had a um a part of a verse from um, deuteronomy which 
which said, the Lord your God, who is going before you, will fight for you. And it, yeah, it just, it made me tear at work. It was just, it was a beautiful message and um, at the right, delivered at the right time. And I think, so again, if, if during your prayers, if you're thinking of somebody, then, then reach out to them. Just reach out and let them know that you're thinking of them. To everybody at church, yes, I love you all. And um, keep safe and we'll be back in that church soon. Bye. Wonderful. Well, lovely um, to hear from uh, Neil there. So, uh, um, and great to pray for all those who are serving, um, serving um, that in the care homes across the nation. <sighs> Wonderful. Well, it's um, it's good to be with you to share God's word with you this morning. I uh, uh, haven't done this yet. This is my first time of preaching live. Uh, across the internet so uh, uh, do bear with me as I try this and and give it a go for the first time. Um, It would happen that this, we've we've had a printer for 14 years, it would happen that this weekend it should break. So I am now, I've gone back to old-fashioned writing uh, my notes on lined paper. So uh, there we are, it's a very interesting time. so today I wanted to uh, just, if there are any children still watching, I don't know if there are any young people who, are, uh, who have been stayed attentive over all this time, but I wanted to play a music clip. And if there are any young people who are still watching, then can I get you to um, post on the YouTube channel what you think um, this song is. So I'm going to play a short clip of a song and and I want the uh, children to tell me what they think it is. If there are no children present, then um, then that's fine. Adults, you can play this game um, too. Okay, so bear with me as I pick up the right device. I've got four devices on the uh, desk in front of me. So here we go. I'm just going to play this short clip and uh, you've got to try and guess what, uh, where this comes from and what the name of the song is. Right, so if you post on the YouTube, see if we've got any um, posts of what people think that is. I'll try that again one more time. Could you hear that okay? Can I see some thumbs up in the uh, Zoom room? Brilliant. Okay, here we go. There we are. So um, I think I had some thumbs up. So I think, so I've got some adults saying, are we still counted as young? Mm, not sure. Um, uh, yes, of course, of course. So the, the answer to the uh, question is... Um, well, we have no replies from uh, the YouTube channel, but we do in the Zoom room. So people say that it's Toy Story. So well done, those of you that got that right. Toy Story. And the name of the song 
is uh, you have a friend in me. So today I wanted us to um, to look at what it means to be friends with God in this time of lockdown. I think that it's an important thing and a message to remind ourselves of what it means to be God's friend, to be friends with God. Well done, Jackson. Jackson got it right. Brilliant. He obviously knows his uh, his films and um, and he did post on YouTube. So I I have my my friendly assistant here. We had six people that got that right. Brilliant. So we have a lot more children listening in than I thought. Brilliant. So we are, uh, as I say, looking at um, what it means to be friends with God this morning. And I'm just going to try and uh, do this in 20 minutes I've given myself. So let's see how we get on uh, with that. So firstly, friendship with God. Now, in the film Toy Story, um, it was very much a story between Andy and his toys, the friendship he had with um, Woody in particular, but all of his toys um, that they were friends. In lockdown, um, Abby and I have been spending a bit more time worshipping and praying together, which has uh, been a, a nice uh, thing. Now, admittedly, some of our worship songs are more back from the 80s uh, time, but um, um, but we still it's still worship. We're still glorifying God together. And one of the things that in those times we we sort of uh, listen to God and God um, speaks to us. We've been looking at the names of God and uh, and various things like that. And one of the phrases that God um, spoke to me even this week was about developing friendship with him, um, growing in my friendship with him. And it's something which, you know, I'm still learning. I, I thought I've learned um, to some degree, but my prayer is that each one of us uh, who are listening may take time during this lockdown, during this time of um, these strange times, to discover more about what it means to be a friend of God's. And I'm going to try something else now. Again, this is hopefully interacting a bit more with the um, um, uh, YouTube people who are listening. And sometimes we use scales, don't we, to gauge how we're doing in particular areas of life. We might say um, my my fitness, if a scale of one to 10, my fitness is about an eight. Um, so, um, uh, or it might be lower. So I want us to play a quick game. And I want you to um, tell me a little bit about yourself, what you like and what you don't like. So on, uh, on the uh, YouTube channel, if you post on the numbers one to 10 of what you think about the certain things. So say, for example, um i say marmite um then do m1 if you absolutely hate marmite but do m10 if you love it if you really love marmite put m10 wonderful that's the first one second is football who loves football listening i know we can't watch any football at the moment but football is a big favorite of noah's he loves liverpool and is very disappointed that he can't see them ultimately finish off the premiership this year who likes um sorry Michaela loves number seven for football number seven football very good Michaela thank you um oh Marmite Marmite there we are Nathan's Marmite good to have Nathan listening in from his bedroom is he in the other room I, I see you looking around oh there he is off the screen there we go wonderful um so Harvey hates Marmite so obviously he won't be having that for toast for tea tonight. Oh, we've got a lot more coming through now. Matthew Rhodes is a lover of Marmite, it seems. You must have a massive pot of Marmite at home. And Michael Cowley, brilliant. Another lover of Marmite. But it's a, it's a love and hate thing because we have Julie and Hannah Hall who absolutely hate Marmite. So um, it is definitely like the, um, the news tells us. You either love it or you hate it. Um, what about EastEnders? Anybody like EastEnders? Do you love EastEnders? Not 10 for EastEnders? E10? Okay. Wonderful. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. I, we've had enough um, finding out about what people hate and what they don't like and what they do like. I, if, if we, I wonder, and do keep posting. It'd be good to see as we go on. I do wonder if we did a scale of how much of a friend that you considered yourself to be to God. I wonder what you would put. I wonder how close you feel that you are a friend 
to God. I know there are sometimes, you know, in my life, I certainly feel that that number might be quite low. But there are other times where I just th- I feel really close to God and I feel he's really speaking to me. I feel like I'm, I'm able to uh, really connect with him. So how do we increase that number, if you like? How does that number grow? How does our friendship with God grow? And this morning, I just want to take um, 10, 15 minutes to suggest four ways of how we grow in our friendship with God. And the first one, perhaps I'll start with the most obvious is by spending time with him, by spending time with him. Um, When this uh, coronavirus first hit uh, our shores, if you like, I got very ill. I was very ill with um, a flu for three or four days and had a a, a cough, quite a mild cough, but a a cough nonetheless. So because I was exhibiting symptoms, I self-isolated myself in the attic and, and the, uh, the advice was to, for, to do it for seven days. So I was physically cut off from my family for seven days. I was stuck in the attic. It was nice to see food appear at my door every, three times a day and cups of teas, teas on regular occurrences. But, but it wasn't the same as being in the presence of my family, having that physical interaction. I really missed being with them. And I think it's the same with God. He longs to spend time with us. He longs to spend time with us. And I think somebody in the Bible that really knew about spending time with God and spending time um, with him devoted and and worshipping him was King David. King David knew how to prioritise his time. And he ensured he prioritised time with God. And we read in 1 Chronicles chapter 22, verse 19 it says now devote your heart and soul to seeking the lord your god seek the lord your god and and david spoke this um to the leaders at the time the leaders of israel just before they were to uh, solomon was going to build the temple it's a preparation before the temple and i think it's very important as we continue uh being in this lockdown to take time out to spend with god to spend time with him and um, and David, obviously, a lot of us know he wrote the Psalms, the um, Psalms in the Bible. And um, Psalm 25 um, is a great psalm where he he looks at um, the it's a psalm where he sort of declares uh, the greatness of God. And he talks about. Um, oh, good. Psalm 25. There it is. Um, he talks about um, his trust and hope in God. And there's a real expression of dependence upon God through humility, uh, teachability and obedience. And there's one verse in that, verse 14, where it says, The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. And the um, uh, another translation, if you like, of that verse is the friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him. The friendship of the Lord. Or, and again, another translation, the secrets of God, the secrets. You know, it, it shows that level of friendship when God will share his secrets with his people, with his children. You know, we share our secrets with our friends and God wants to be our friends. OK, that's number one. Number two, by talking to him, by spending time with him, but also by talking to him. Now, our children, Tom and Noah, um, who you saw on the screen a bit earlier. When they were small, we used to uh, pray with them as they went to bed, but we used to try and help them develop their friendship and their relationship with God. And one of the ways we do that is by we um, we 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 ask them to tell Jesus, tell God about your day. Just talk to him about things that you've done today, what you've been up to as a great starting place for their relationship to develop with God, for them to tell him about that day. You know, in a friendship with God, we can tell him anything and he won't get offended. And I just want to, again, talk about another uh, person from the Bible who developed an an amazing friendship with God. And that's Moses. Now, Moses um, first really met with God at the burning bush. That was the moment he starts dialoguing with God about um, who he's called to be. and, And God asks him to 
um, go back to Egypt. He meets with him and um, and let me just find it. It's in Exodus chapter 3. And I want to look at this very briefly with you because when he first um, saw God, he sort of hid his face and he um, was too afraid to look at God. And then it, we read in uh, verse 11 after uh, God asked Moses, says to Moses, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go who should, that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. And I think, um, you know, this is a real moment where a Moses engages with God, he engages by God by asking honest, real and revealing questions. Who am I that I should go? You know, why me? You know, it's a great place to be, to recognise our inadequacies, that actually, you know, Moses is like, who am I? I, I, you know, what if you know Mo, the story of Moses? He is in a real mess. He's run away from where he was living. He's run away from Egypt. He's run away from the people of God. He's made a real mess of things, and yet God is calling him to go back and face his fears, calling him to step out in faith and walk into the promises that God has for him. You know, our friendship with God deepens as we share our honest questions and thoughts with him. You know, it says in James 4, verse 8, that he will draw close to us as we come to him, as we draw close to him. God is in control and he wants us to talk with him, to dialogue with him, to express our thoughts, our feelings and our frustrations and our fears to him. And he will hear our prayers, hear our thoughts. So talk. Um, so spending time talking and thirdly, by turning to him. By turning to him. God wants us to turn to him. God knows what's best for us. And by turning to him, we are trusting and walking in his plan for our life. I think turning to him is all about obedience. Moses could really, he could easily have said no to God when God asked him to go back to Egypt. He could have said, no, I'm not going back. You know, as we look to God, the God of all creation, the God of all things, he calls us to act on his word. He calls us to um, be obedient to the things that he's called us to, loving him, um, fulfilling his plan to fulfill the word of God, obeying the word of God. The Bible is our guide, our, uh, our go-to place when we look to where God wants us to be and what God wants us to do. He calls us to take steps of faith, take steps of faith in this place. Whatever your step of faith is for today, for this week, he's calling you to do that. And I think as we spend time with him, we get to hear what God is calling us to. Moses was obedient to God's call on his life and he went back to Egypt. You know, he was a bit hesitant. We read in the next chapter, in, in chapter four, you know, Moses says, what if they don't believe me or listen to me and say, you know, the Lord didn't appear to you. And the Lord said to him, you know, he, then he starts to um, point him to his staff and he performs a miracle because the Lord, um, you know, the, the, the the staff that he has in his hand turns into a snake and back into a staff. And I think that as we step out in faith, as we come before God, as we talk to him and ask him things, ask him questions, ask him for miracles. I believe that God won't let us down. He will be with us and we will see the kingdom of God come as we're obedient to his word and his call. You know, I think obedience to God is foundational to growing in friendship with him. It's foundational to growing. You know, after all, it's his plan. His plan, his plan from the beginning, creation was his plan. He's led his people right to this point. He has a plan for all eternity. And it's a privilege that we are called to be part of that. We are called to be part of God's plan for all of creation to bring people into relationship with him. 
Um, and finally, how am I doing for time? Finally, our friendship with God is based on trust, is based on trust. We are called to uh, spend time with him. We are, we, you know, we actually, it's a, it's a joy to spend time with him. We're called to turn to him. We're called to talk to him and we're called to trust in him. You know, being a Christian is centered on our trust in the power and the death um, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus is alive. We trust in the fact that Jesus is alive and his word is our guide to this truth. We trust that we are saved by faith, that we have salvation in Jesus. You know, it's not anything that we can do that bring us into salvation, to bring us into relationship and friendship with Jesus. We are saved by faith into his kingdom, into his purposes. You know, trust is the foundation for any natural friendship. And it's the same with God. Trust is foundational. It, do we trust God in these days, in this time? You know, Jesus has made a way for everyone to be friends with God. You know, the new covenant, this new days that we're living in, where every single person can come to know Jesus. Jesus is the gateway to heaven, the gateway to the kingdom of God. You know, there was a, a day 2000 years ago where the, the presence of God was only in the Holy of Holies. But today, the presence of God dwells in every believer in Jesus. The Holy Spirit dwells in the heart of every believer. And do you know that for yourself? Do you know the truth of Jesus being in your heart, being in your life? Because we can dialogue with God. The salvation of God is in us and through us as we put our trust in Jesus. Our friendship with God is based on trust. And I just want to finish with two more things. Firstly, Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6, a well-known uh, a piece of scripture that my children know and uh, we look at and we talk about quite regularly. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways, submit, submit, turn to him and he will make your path straight. So he is for us. He's with us at this time. And my encouragement is to trust in him. And the last thing I want to share before I finish is this poem. And it's a poem from um, the Post. And uh, this one is the latest one um, that we've got from them. And right at the beginning of this is a poem. And it's written by Annie Johnson Flint. And uh, she uh, died in 1932, but she was orphaned as a child. And she was adopted by a loving Christian family. She dreamed of being a concert pianist, but developed rheumatoid arthritis so severe that by the age of 30, she couldn't walk. But despite intense pain in her fingers, she became a prolific writer and her faith in Christ was unshakable. Here is somebody who had that trust in Christ, in God, in the midst of all the circumstances. And this is what she wrote. He giveth more grace as our burdens grow greater. He sendeth more strength as our labours increase. He added affliction. He added to added afflictions. He added his mercy to multiplied trials. He multiplies peace. When we have exhausted our store of endurance, when our strength has failed ere the day is half done, when we reach the end of our hoarded resources, our father's forgiving is only begun. His love has no limits. His grace has no measure. His power, no boundary known unto men. For out of his infinite riches is Jesus. He giveth and giveth and giveth again. So let me just pray as I finish this morning. Father, we thank you. Thank you that we can have friendship with you. Thank you that we can know friendship with the living God that you desire our time, that you want us to come into your presence, to come and spend time with you. Thank you that as we talk, as we share our hearts with you, that you come and meet us with your peace, with your joy, with your strength. Thank you, Lord, as we come to you, Lord, and as we trust that you, that you meet us where we're at and you come into our lives. Jesus, we love you and we worship you this morning. We praise you. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, Rob. Um, yeah, it's just incredible that we can call Jesus friend, isn't it? Thank you so much for that reminder. And um, we're just going to remind ourselves of why we can do that. Um, uh, Rob's asked for us to end by singing Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice. You became nothing and he's given us this gift of life. Let's just finish our time to together by worshipping him and using this to thank him.
Lord Jesus, just thank you. Thank you for who you are and for what you have done for us. We just praise you and we are humbled afresh. We thank you for all that you have poured into us day by day. We thank you for what you've poured into us through worship and testimonies and the words today. I pray that, that will, those things will be a seed in us that bear fruit over the coming days. Amen. It's been great to have you join us. Um, just a couple of things. I just want to say thank you to Emily and Ben again um, for really stepping up and helping me out in the worship week by week when I am leading. Um, it's, it's so wonderful to have my kids with me. Um, so thank you, guys. You're doing brilliantly. Um, and I know that we have got um, a great team of people that are normally part of our worship team and people behind the scenes. We've got some people working really hard behind the scenes now, learning all this new technology and doing a brilliant job at bringing this all to us. But I know that we have a big team um, that do worship and PA and words normally. And hopefully you will have seen that I've sent you an email. Um, it feels like ages since we've been together. So I've just set up a Zoom meeting for us all on Tuesday night, just for us to share some encouragement, have a bit of worship together um, and just pray together. So please, if you can make it on Tuesday, it'll be wonderful to see your lovely faces because I haven't seen some of you for ages. Um, so yeah, that is it for now. Um, have a wonderful week. There will be a slide coming up shortly, I think once my face is gone. Um, just if you, if something has really touched you during the service and you would like to um, have some prayer, if you have felt that you would like to give your life to Jesus for the first time and you're not sure what steps to take, there will be um, contact details coming up. Um, so please, please do get in touch. There are people that would love to pray with you, to spend time with you. Um, you can also comment on WhatsApp. YouTube. That was the message I was just given. I was like, that's confusing. You can also co comment underneath on YouTube as has been available during the service. And that's another way you can get in contact with us. So that is it. I think that's all um, I need to say now, unless I'm being given anything else. So just have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day and a brilliant week. And yeah, just remember how, how much Jesus is your friend and how he longs to spend time with you. Great. Lovely to have been with you. <laughs>